Today we're going to be drawing the quintessential art school cast, the cast of the eye taken from Michelangelo's David. This is a really great casting as it contains some really big forms, but also some really nice subtle rendering that we can get stuck into. And as well as that, some really interesting interior forms that we can also tackle. We will be looking at the whole process of drawing, from looking at our materials, to starting off with our big shapes and proportion, moving on to our two value block in, and finally our fully rendered drawing. This will be the whole process with nothing left out, so you're going to see every small detail. We're going to be using the traditional materials of art schools from the 19th century. Starting with the paper, this is a traditional paper used extensively, almost exclusively in the art schools of the 19th century, and was made famous by the artist and academician Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres. This paper has a very distinctive tooth running down it which can be seen in these photographs of drawings done by the art students of 19th century art schools. The brands I recommend are Fabriano, Arches, Taylor and Rowney and the Zirkel brand. Alongside Angle paper, we'll be using willow charcoal. And again, willow is a really traditional material used in the art schools of the 19th century. And it's an amazingly diverse medium, giving you really expressive drawings, which can be seen here by the drawings of John Singer Sargent. It also can be really highly controlled and if used properly can give you a whole wealth of detail which again can be seen in the drawings of plaster casts created by students in the 19th century. Now, traditional schools use black chalk alongside willow charcoal to give you the whole range of intense blacks. But we're going to be using a slightly more modern alternative in the form of the General's Charcoal Pencil. Now, so far, these really are the best charcoal pencils I've used and doesn't have any grit in it that can scratch the paper and gives you really nice, smooth, buttery blacks. Alongside these, we'll be using a paper stump and I needed a razor to manipulate the charcoal on the paper. All right, so that's enough talking for now. Let's get drawing. Pencils that come from the factory tend to be finished with a small point exposed, which is perfect for writing but isn't ideal for drawing, for which we will need a long exposed area of material. You want to hold the blade in your dominant hand between your forefinger and thumb, using your other hand to hold the pencil and guide the blade. You're aiming to take off small ribbons of wood about two inches from the top in one continuous motion if possible. If you get stuck, don't be tempted to dig in, as it's very easy to snap the pencil that way. Every time you take off a ribbon of wood with the blade, turn the pencil slightly in your other hand, and keep turning and shaving off small ribbons of wood. You're looking for a nice continuous taper to the end of the pencil. You'll find that the binder in charcoal pencils tend to stick to the charcoal a little, but don't be tempted to push really hard with the blade as you're almost guaranteed to snap the pencil. Instead, using a fresh blade, gently go over that area, which will eventually clean the material of the binder.
Next is the process of sanding down the material to create an even tapered point. By holding the pencil flat against the sandpaper and moving the pencil across at the same time as rotating the pencil fully, you are sanding the pencil evenly. Repeat this process until you have a nice tapered end. It is a good idea to prepare a few of each pencil just in case you do snap one so you can carry on working without breaking your rhythm. 